for them just to kind of keep things moving. Um, so, you know, I've been really honored to uh, work with and actually learn a lot from these three, uh, myself um, uh, and, and big supporters of Green Home Institute, and we're excited to uh, be able to share their stories about what they've actually achieved uh, in the field and are currently achieving uh, with homes, new and existing. Um, and so I'm just very excited to have them here to kind of share what their strategies and approach and lessons learned and success stories with, uh, with, with all of you. Um, so first up will be uh, Eric Hughes, and he is owner of Image Design, uh, national award-winning uh, sustainability uh, firm uh, located right here uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and then after uh, Eric, we've actually got uh, Tom, who came from uh, Illinois uh, to join us here. He actually just signed up initially <laughs> to come on out and, and learn. So uh, Tom Bassadilly, who is the uh, founder uh, of Tom Bassadilly uh, Architects, um, and who is a, a designer and sustainability uh, architect within the state of Illinois and design outside of the state too, right? So yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, Ryan McCoon um, with Endura Homes, uh, coming down from Traverse City, Michigan here to join us today, uh, hanging out right behind me, who will speak last. So with that, Eric, I'll hand it off to you, and then we'll go from there. So. Hi, my name's Eric Hughes from Image Design. I'm just going to kind of show three of my projects. One is a past project that I did probably five years ago, and the other one we just got done. And then I have a future project that we're just starting that I'm going to talk about. This is the past project I did, and it was kind of my first all-electric home I did. And it's up in Stanwood, Michigan, and we have a pretty nice solar array on it. And back then, we were using solar hot water, and we would heat the room with water. And you'll notice in the picture there's a, a room there that uses a lot of electricity that the homeowners have. And it kind of... what affected my net zero and it was a lesson learned and they informed me about the solar array concept and they use it all year long. So that I like the home feature because it's something that as an architect I should have been aware of and I can't live without and my children can live without. We struggled watching oh sorry we struggled watching the electricity being used from that hot tub and we struggled trying to figure out what to do with that hot tub. Later on, as we ended up putting, the, they, they had a problem with the mechanical system a year or so ago, so we went with an air source heat pump that we just put on the project and we took the two solar hot water panels off because solar electric's so affordable now actually use those two solar hot water panels for the hot tub and they put another just a single panel on it so the hot tub now is off the grid hot tub and those I guess you know as an architect you got to look at different things that happen with the home and I don't I didn't ask questions about the hot tub and it's just something to think about and how, how to deal with it in the future. So we dealt with it this, this last year and it kind of worked out nice. So the current project that we just got done with is called the Prickly Pear Sanctuary. That was a home that's passive solar and active solar. And I guess one of the lessons I learned from that home was I designed passive solar and I designed the whole south roof to have solar panels on that roof and as we did a solar assessment of the property right in front of the home was beautiful trees and different things and we determined that we had to cut down a bunch of those trees and the homeowner did not want to do that so we ended up on the west side of the home having a kind of an open field so we ended up putting all the solar panels ground mounted so that worked out nice and a lot of times 
you don't think about all the trees that you have to cut down and different things. So having different options for that when that happens makes you know a pretty big impact on the property. So this home was all electric and it is passive solar. And a lot of times one of the main things I like to do with every home is look at passive solar keeping the home on the northwest axis actually saves a lot of money if you design your overhang. Here you'll see this is kind of, I would say, just after winter. And you can see the overhangs are shading the house, but like on June 21st, that shading is right at the bottom of the windows and stuff. So that really helps with the heating and cooling loads and stuff, because I can really, heat the home during the winter with a lot of the passive solar coming in and hitting the concrete floors. And then during the winter, all of that will shade the windows and it will keep the home cool. So this home was designed all electric and it really seemed to work out nice. So I'm kind of going a little fast, so. But our we did end up getting Green Star Platinum Zero Energy Award for the home. It's the first in the nation. And all my homes are pretty much zero step designed. And Jake, the builder, won Home Builder's Best Green Home Award this year for that project. The home floor plan here, you see, is on the northwest axis and we were here is kind of where all my solar path is for the home and we're trying to I'm getting all confused because I'm nervous so sorry about that but mm, yeah I'm just not used to talking to people so but sorry about that the, this is a ground mount array over on the west side of the home. So the nice thing about ground mount arrays I find is that that's adjustable twice a year and it has it's set up for December 21st changing that and June 21st. So the homeowner can just walk up to it, adjust it. There's only two positions and it's very easy to change and the ground mount does have its advantages over a roof mount. It's easy to clean and easy to take care of. And I just talked to the homeowner on that project and he said that they're net metering backwards very well right now and he's pretty happy with everything going on with that. Um, my newest project is what we call the Pines. It's an 1890s zero energy farmhouse. We're going to be taking an 1890s farmhouse to complete zero energy. And if we can do that, it'll be the oldest home in the nation. It'll be replacing the oldest home in Ann Arbor. And I'm really excited about this project. It's a lot of work. We just tore into the wall systems and stuff to try to see what's going on in the walls and there's a lot of lead in this home and stuff so we're going to be replacing all the siding, all the interior wall system and stuff. Back, I think it was probably 2003 or four. they picked this home up and moved it onto an ICF foundation and when they did that they didn't quite place it correctly. So it's actually got a four inch to five inch gap on the outside of those exterior, not a gap, but a ledge from the ICF because they set the house back on the concrete part of the ICF. So we got a big lip around the whole house. And that's caused some problems with leakage and different things from not flashing it properly and not doing it properly. 
So we're coming back in and we have to replace all the windows in the home. They're all single pane glass and they're not very efficient. So we chose Anderson A-Series triple pane glass. We, we want to keep double hung because it keeps with the historical aspect of the home. And here is the foundation system. Ended up being an ICF foundation, which is, I think, great that they did put it on the ICF foundation for us. And it's our 23 foundation. And like I said, it's four inches wider, so that caused us some issues. But we came up with an idea to use six inch T studs, which Buzz here and those guys are gonna talk a little later, but we're gonna put, we're gonna fur the whole exterior of that house out six more inches, and we're gonna add a second story to a part of the home using the same T stud system, but we're gonna achieve an R54 in our sidewall, which will help us get to net zero. And oops, sorry about that. Again, we decided to go with a ground mount 10K system on the home instead of putting it on the roof of the home. We, we wanted to keep the home really looking historically correct and stuff. So we're looking at a 10K ground mount, which will help us we kind of figured out we'll be in a negative Hertz score range with this project. But there's a lot of, a lot of thought going into trying to take an 1890s farmhouse to zero energy. And we have to replace all the furnace systems, mechanical systems and stuff. So I'm kind of rushing through it, but I, that's kind of where I'm at with the three projects that I've done that are all net zero. And if I'm probably a little early, so, but, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Eric. All right. So, um.